you know, a couple more opportunities as well to see what would happen. See how, uh, yeah, whether because I think he very much enjoyed his time at Guys. There, got that, Im got that impression, um, but. Yeah, hopefully doesn't have too much of, a, of an impact on the game tonight. Rollins comes away with it down the right-hand side. He's up against Dawson, and he's doing really well to track back. Rollins skips away from Kendall, cuts inside onto his left foot, takes the shot straight into the arms of Oli Battersby. Chapman sends it upfield. Chippendale calls for it. It's won by Ben Sharif, and it's in there, and it's scored by Vaughn Redford. It was a long ball forward from Aaron Chapman. It was a good first contact by Hamza Ben Sharif. Redford took a touch inside the six yard box and with his right foot poked it past Oli Battersby. And on nine minutes, it's guys Lanil works at town one. Really simple goal. And it's, a, you know, it's a really good pass by Chapman. It's fantastic goalkeeping by him, really, to, to get that ball into the head of Ben Sharif. And then Vaughan Redford, he's never going to miss that. He's a few yards out. It's a good goal for Worksop. Let's face it, it feels like it's an end of season game for Geisler. Hawkridge sends the cross in, headed away by Kendall, only as far as Redford, drops the shoulder edge of the area, takes the shot, and it goes wide of the post, but not by much, helping out his former club. And CDP50 says it's been a bit more even last 10 minutes, and as I say, that Kofi Moore's made a running behind him, behind Atherton, cross comes in, and it's a Gabriel Johnson, oh, and it was a great ball in from Kofi Moore, right across the face of goal, Gabriel Johnson didn't make contact with it, and it's eventually cleared away and behind for a corner. Well, wow, such an incisive move. One ball clipped in behind. It was a perfect pass from Moore. And if Gabriel Johnson could have just got a touch on it, we'd be talking about the scores being level, Tom. 2.23 yards from goal, right of centre. He cross comes in, cleared away by the first man, which is Sam Wedgbury. Loose ball, met by Ollie Brown. Brown takes the shot. Oh, and it's a brilliant save from Chapman. Ollie Brown tried his, <laughs> tried his look from distance. It was on target. And Chapman had to palm it over the crossbar. A great strike from Brown. Hawkridge to stand over the free kick. It's two in the wall for Geisley. Kofi Moore and Adam Dawson. Cross comes in. It's towards Ben Sharif. Ben Sharif meets it first oh, time. Save. Great save on Battersby, but it wouldn't have counted anyway because the flag goes up for offside. Managed to uh, get it out to Reese Kendall. At left back. Switch of play. Perfect touch by Kofi Moore. Cross comes in from Moore. It's won by Johnson in the air. It's in towards Murphy. Murphy was challenging in there with Chapman. And just couldn't stretch enough. And Chapman was put off his line to smother the ball. Eibel takes the free kick quick. He's trying to find Kofi Moore, who's made a good run on the right. Atherton was alert to it, though. And Moore keeps it in. Moore gets away from Atherton, takes the shot. It's blocked by the legs of Chapman. And Burrow can clear it away. And Ollie Brown stops it going any further. And it's out for a to build in an attack. Or maybe not, because as I've said, that Jay Rollins has just gone back to Aaron Chapman. And with that, the referee has brought to a close the first half here at Nethermore. So it's Geisley nil, works up town one. I've never seen him run that quick. What's going on? It'd have to be 4-4-2, you'd think, wouldn't you, with uh, Denton and Murphy up front. Moore's out on the right. To get there first, but it's recovered in the middle by Whelan. Gives it to Kendall. Ball comes in, it's in towards Denton. Chippendale's going to pick it up, edge of the area, takes a touch, shoots. Callum Chippendale wide of the post from behind for a goal kick. Oh, now here's Redford, balling behind for Rollins, flag stays down, Rollins breaks into the area, Jay Rollins left right footed, slots it past Ollie Battersby and doubles the lead for Works Up Town. 53 minutes gone, it's Geisley nil, Works Up Town 2. Jay Rollins timed his run to perfection and the moment he beat the offside trap, you just felt he was going to double the lead for the visitors and it was a really well taken finish. Big header from Kendall. Now brought down by Dawson, goes back to Kendall. Kendall's touch is loose and Hawkridge pounces on it, ball in behind for Hughes. Hughes into the area, it's out wide to Rollins, now back to Hughes. Time to uh, pick a cross out, cross goes in, headed on to Jordan Burrow at the back post. Jordan Burrow makes Ollie Battersby, puts it through the guys, the goalkeeper's legs and makes Works at Town's lead three. And on 56 minutes, it's guys the nil Works at Town three. Massive gaps, works up, exploit it. And works up, can bring the ball forward. Now, the substitute, Hall is away down the right. Hall cuts it onto his left foot, plays it into Liam Hughes. Hughes into the area, gives it to Burrow. Burrow takes the shot, puts it in at the near post, and it's guys the nil works at town four. Eight, 
yeah just well worked by Worksop frustrating for Geisley Callan Murphy not happy at all he's actually has his shirt ripped so let's argue we've got 24 minutes left a bit, bit of ad, a bit of added time it means we need to score a goal every 1.5 minutes Chippendale oh wait oh. tries to uh, to start that process but it's a shot into the arms of Aaron Chapman with his left foot from the edge of the area who keeps it rolling to Ashman cross goes in from Ashman it's got a lot on it headed away by Hutchinson now chested down by Kendall it's re-Kendall territory but he can't shrug off Burrow out wide to Brown cross goes in it's towards Denton Denton gets ahead on it it falls to Chippendale edge of the area Chippendale shoots straight into the waiting arms of Aaron Chapman we can't even get a consolation can we Battersby sends one upfield Denton's challenging with Ben Sharif for it it's with Whelan gives it to Ashman Ashman sends a cross forward Denton wins his flick on it's into Pratt Pratt's into the area and it's safely guided into the arms of Aaron Chapman by Deegan Allerton I think if he takes it first time he's got a better chance because the moment he takes that over torch that's it isn't it the second man blocks it corner comes in it's towards the front post Eibel gets a header on it and it's palmed away by Chapman and behind for another guy's the corner this time from the opposite side the return would be Ollie Brown yeah I think he is in terms of his profile, in terms of his age, in terms of... Oh, cross comes in from Kendall, it's towards Denton, oh. and falls to Tom Pratt in the area, and Tom Pratt pulls a goal back for Geisley on the edge of the six-yard box. It was a left-footed shot into the bottom right-hand corner, and on 86 minutes, it's Geisley, one works at Town 4. Well, it means nothing to us. It could mean something for the playoffs at the end of the season on Saturday, because all of a sudden, with goal difference meaning so much I mean ref, to be fair ref could just say corner goes in it's towards Chippendale and Chippendale <laughs> heads it into the top corner and Geisley have half the well made it 4-2 89 minutes Geisley 2 works at town 4 and it is a late comeback on I'm loving the optimism by Jamil everywhere just grabbing the ball and going come on we can do this um, I mean again as a genuine thing this is a goal that Hyde United, Ashton United fans would be looking at and going it, it at Hyde United fans especially, it, it could be crucial come the end of Saturday. Dale volleys it away. And with that, the referee brings to a close today's proceedings at Nethermore. It's finished guys, the two works at town four. I'm sure it's a, a disappointment to you with the scoreline tonight. What do you make of the overall of the game, though? I think people will probably look at the scoreline and say, yeah, we've probably given it a good goal for the last 10 minutes. But when you look, actually, over the course of the 95 minutes we've played, 20 minutes of it, it was a lack of effort and a lack of willingness to do the basics. Or I always write on the board, take pride in what we do. Um, and for those 20 minutes, we didn't do them. And we've given them four goals. We've not had to work hard for it. It's first balls, second balls. We know they were going to win the majority of the first balls. They're built as a team for that. Um, whether it's a runner off you, whether it's a ball, bouncing ball, those 20 minutes, we just, we've just we given four goals. For 75 minutes of it, we've created a lot more chances. Um, and yeah, it's, like I say, it's more difficult because we know there's a team in there that, including myself, that should be a lot higher than where we are. And... We'll look back on it and reflect on it. We've just had a chat in there and we look over the course of the season about levels of consistency. I've just said to the lads, at any level of football, the teams who win and win leagues and get into playoffs are the teams who are the most consistent over the year. Um, looking back from Saturday to today, again, whether it's tiredness, whether it's just, like say, doing the basics, it can be tough. But, yeah, I think it's a game of fine margins. The ball might bounce in the back of the net on one of the chances before you know it. It's 3-1, not two. Not 4-0. Um, penalty at the end. Stonewall. Give every foul for 95 minutes. The one he only has to do. Don't mind saying it in front of the ref. Um, at half-time he even said, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of niggly fouls. He just shoved a bit back and through with his face into the dirt. Um, they're the obvious ones. And yeah, like I say, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's the ref's fault, but... The game didn't flow for probably both teams, and there's probably a few decisions that could have gone either way. Um, but yeah, 4 2, that goes in, penalty 4 3, and there's still three or four minutes on the clock. I said at 4 1, I've seen funnier things happen. 
um, especially at our level of football where anything could happen. Um, so yeah, it's a real tough one and the lads, like you say, the they know where we've gone wrong tonight, which is the most important thing. And like I say, it's more important they finish on a high on Saturday when we go to work into the way. How much of uh, injuries and changes uh, to the team affected? I mean, we obviously lost Gabriel Johnson at half time for what looked like an injury just before the break. I presume that was an enforced change. How much has that affected things in this run out? Yeah, it's tough. Like you say, we just lose Aidan Walker with his shoulder. Um, Prince has been suffering for nearly two and a half weeks. People are probably asking where he's been. He's not been dropped. He's just he's been ill, and it happens. Like I say, the lads are working hard, and if you get ill, you get ill. Um, yeah, Gab's been struggling with his knee, and he's just fell on it. I think they've landed on him, and you have to make those changes. I said to him, I said, I'm not going to run you into the ground. I said, it'd be, I've got more importantly, if I was a player and that was my manager, you'd like to put me that looking after him. And I said to Gab's, there's nothing more you can do there. Um, so yeah, it was an unforced change, but the good thing is, and Whatever happens, I always say there's a group of lads in there where you have the ability to change shape like we did, and it probably benefited us. Um, you've got lads who can play three or four positions. Um, you look at Callum Murphy, he's played out wide, he's played in the 10, he's played up front tonight. Callum Chippendale, superb, centre mid, right wing back, played off the right for a bit. You've got to be versatile because at any level of football, if you don't have huge bodies, which at our level you don't, you've got to be able to adapt to certain games. and the first 10 15 minutes obviously they knew what they had to do in terms of their season i said to the lads it'll be like a hot potato they'll be riled up and it was it was bang on and we just didn't get to grips with it in the first 10 and then, like i say you score early on it does take the wind out of you and at four nil um i do i like to say right on the board take pride in what we do and what i said to the lads was regardless of whether you're four nil down five nil up you just take pride in what we're doing that's doing the right things and the way you conduct yourself on and off the pitch and look back on that other than the 20 minute spell where we've give four goals away we've certainly done that it's obviously been a bit of a disappointing end to the season end to the campaign but we've got one more game to go get a trip to workington um and an opportunity perhaps to end the season on the high it's uh it's important, isn't it, to keep the, the a, bit, a bit of positivity towards the, the very end of the campaign? Yeah, 100%. Like I say, you've got to go into Saturday and treat it like there's a lot on it. Um, whether you've got one game or you've got 100 games, your mentality needs to be the same. We all turn up and we all get paid to play football and we should all want to win. Um, whether there's a lot riding on it or whether there's nothing, um, the lads will probably hammer me because I go on about it a lot um, and people can see that probably from the sideline you've got to care if you don't care about how it looks or how you play, how you play or how you perform as a team or as an individual um, there's no point doing it so yeah it's important just for the club itself um, more importantly the fans who travel um, it's not the shortest of journey to finish the season um, and again like I say people I always said I've said it in a couple of interviews now people will look back at our last bit of the run um, and judge us based on that which they've got every right to do so Okay, and we've got to take pride in what we do and make sure that we finish on a high and give it everything we can up until half five on Saturday when, like I say, it'll be the last game of the season and before you know it, lads, have got a time to rest and obviously before you know it, the season comes around quick enough and it'll be pre-season, but there's a lot of lads in there that'll probably learn from this season, quite a lot of lads that have maybe not been in this position before, where when we get into the back end, the business end, we're in the shouts of a playoff and... I just said to the lads then, including myself, I, I experienced it at Hyde last year, getting beat on the last day, you come out of the playoffs. Um, you come back a better player and, more importantly, a better individual, um, more mature, um, a sense of what you need to do to get over that line. So there's a lot of lads in there that will probably, wherever they're on loan or they're a young lad, they'll come back much better players because, fingers crossed, we're in this position this time next year and the conversation's a lot different and we come off that pitch knowing that we've got two more games rather than obviously at the end of the season on Saturday there's a playoff semi and a playoff final or even a promotion so um, yeah it's it's always difficult when you've got nothing riding on it and I said to the lads even at 4-0 down take pride in what we do there's nothing to lose there's no pressure and like I say at times the football we played and how we adapted to the different situations and formation worked really well um, and that's all you can ask for lads to do but more it always starts whether it's on a Monday how you prep how you come out how you conduct yourself in the warm up how you act in the clubhouse you've got to do those little things because it's a privilege to play football especially at non-league level um, and at the moment 
some lads have probably had a bit of an eye opener in terms of that and it's been an honest conversation but we're certainly not going to put a damper on it the way we've conducted ourselves over the course of the season and how we've stuck together it's probably been the most up and down season maybe in a long time for, especially for myself I've been a gaffer twice three month injury yeah. Yeah. player not player it's it's difficult for everyone in there to get to grips with because some people have probably never experienced it themselves so yeah there's lots to look back on but more importantly everything goes into Thursday now ready for Saturday and like I say that final game you want to give something back to the fans and finally I was just going to ask you actually how you found these two experiences interim because the first one obviously went very well and we got into a real groove from it you've had a much harder time I think into this run out you've two experiences that will set you well instead in in future potential managerial career yeah most definitely I said to the lads people will just expect um, me coming back in oh we'll just win every game and I said to the lads it don't work like that I said you could beat a team 15-0 on a Saturday if you don't turn up on the Tuesday you're going to get beat um, so yeah it's been difficult but it's worth all the stress as daft as it sounds it's been nice that as a club 26 years old and to be asked to do it and take on that role um, from a personal point of view it's it's really pleasing and probably I've got, it sounds a bit cheesy but a proud moment because there's not many people at 26 who get the opportunity to do so so from a player point of view it'll certainly help me next season as well um, because you see the game differently from the sideline so those little key moments where a gaffer might tell you something next year and you think differently you've got to remember the game looks a whole different kind of ball game on the sideline um, whether that's you sat in the stands whether you're behind the goal whether you're in the dugout the games looked completely different that's something I completely took away from it and it's a credit to those people who are managers at non-league level because you do, people just see three cup kickoffs, quarter to eight kickoffs. You don't see the planning, the training, working with players, working with other staff, working with the board, the directors, whoever it is. There's a lot that goes into a quarter to eight kickoff. So, yeah, for me personally, it's, it's been nice. It's probably not been the season I expected. Like I say, I came to the club as and got announced as club captain and pride myself on being a goal-scoring midfielder. And the injury knocked me back three months and. Like I say maybe coming in and out of the team and trying to get that run it doesn't happen but I'll certainly come back a better individual and like I said I just want to reiterate the point that those lads in there will certainly come back better players because there's a lot to learn from this season and although it's not how we all expected over the longevity of maybe the next three or four years there's lads in there that will probably look back on it and go I needed that because it'll certainly boost some people's careers and make them perform better.